What's going on everybody? I am here to do a review for the movie Jurassic World Dominion. This is the third installment of the Jurassic World series. Of course, you had Jurassic World, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, and now you have Jurassic World Dominion. And apparently, this is also allegedly the last Jurassic type movie in the series, whether it's Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. Apparently, allegedly, this is supposed to be the wrapping up of the entire series. There's supposed to be no more Jurassic Parks after this. Allegedly, you got to put that in air quotes because sometimes money talks and you know they make some money and then they'd be ready to come back. So this is basically picking up where Fallen Kingdom left off, and I'm going to throw a disclaimer in there. I did not completely enjoy Fallen Kingdom to the point where I didn't even go see it. And when it came on television, I watched bits and pieces of it. I never even sat through that entire movie in one sitting just to watch it. Now, when it came to Jurassic World, I really enjoyed Jurassic World. Unfortunately, I didn't sit in the theaters, but when it came on television, I did watch it, and I really did enjoy it. And it's kind of hard to really gauge how a movie like that is going to be, especially since it's coming off of Jurassic Part 3 that came out in the early 2000s. And Jurassic World is starting like a new series, but connected to the old films. And you're talking about a huge gap in uh, in movies. But if that movie was to come on television right now, I would actually just sit and watch it because I really enjoyed their take on what they did with that particular film. So now we are in Dominion. That's the name of the film. So now all the dinosaurs, they're not in captivity anymore. They're not in any parks. They're not in any world, you know, places like that. Well, speaking of world, they are actually out in the world now. They pretty much have succeeded with the goal. The goal of the whole Jurassic Park series, even dating back to the originals back in the, you know, the 93 version, was to try to see how dinosaurs would adapt into the world, into society. Because for the longest, they were always in captivity amongst each other in these areas, which was, of course, Jurassic Park. That's just where they were contained at. That's always where they were. So now, in Dominion, in this film, they are now out in the world. Like, they're literally out with people. Like, they're actually engaging with people. They're engaging with other animals and all types of stuff like that. So much, in fact, that there are a lot of hybrids. Why is that? Because a lot of the dinosaurs have been mating with other species, like, you know, birds and everything like that. You see hybrid dinosaurs that have wings and some of them, you know, can, you know, fly and that usually would not fly and all this different types of like stuff like that. And that could be a good thing or that can be a bad thing because, you know, when you're hybrid like that, you can take on the bad traits of something and maybe not so many of the good traits as well. So basically the whole pr uh, premise of this movie is, uh, the girl and uh, basically, in my opinion, I think the movie was more focused around the girl who was in Fallen Kingdom and uh, the raptor, the velociraptor blue who had a daughter and basically a daughter conceived on her own where she did not mate with like another male dinosaur, another male velociraptor. She just get, got pregnant on her own. It's basically a special type of DNA that they have that these researchers or these scientists who are corrupt and real crooked, but that's like the premise for damn near every Jurassic Park movie. Is it some kind of corrupt organization somewhere that wants some personal gain that are trying to take that DNA and trying to do whatever it is that they're trying to do with it. You know, they always try to say, oh, we're doing this for the betterment of the world, but really there's always an ulterior motive whenever it comes to something like that. There's really never a straightforward thing where a lot of times it could be the beneficial of what is supposed to actually happen. It's usually an ulterior motive behind everything. And usually a lot of it involves money and a lot of money. Because when it comes to science, there's a lot of research and a lot of money behind those type of things. What I did like about the movie is actually it, seeing the dinosaurs out in the world, seeing how they did interact with society. Because like I said, that was the goal. Just now the goal is fulfilled. That they're out in society. They blended in with society. Um, I think a lot of people in real life will be worried about how that actually would work. What I did see, like, you know, towards the beginning of the movie was showing the negative effects of what they would be like out in society because they said that with some of the dinosaurs, they were so unhinged that some of the human population was starting to go down because the dinosaurs were killing them. Like they were eating them or, you know, just or trampling them or whatever the case may be. But of course, those were your more bigger ones that were out there. Now, of course, when it comes to some of the more dangerous dinosaurs, they had to be contained more so at a facility 
in another country where most of this movie actually takes place. I think most of this movie was probably shot overseas. I don't think that much of it was shot here in the States, completely honest with you, because there wasn't a lot of U.S. action going on here, opposed to, you know, in other places, and that's completely fine. They got the budget to do so, and it actually, you know, fits into the narrative of the film. Another thing that I liked is that they brought back the OG characters, like the three main characters of the first uh, Jurassic Park movie were in this film. That's not really so much of a spoiler because they kind of gave that away in the trailer. The first trailer they did, they kind of gave away that the three, like the three original main characters were going to come back. And I like that they brought them back. They kind of caught up. It was almost like a reunion because a lot of them haven't seen each other in so long. I'm glad that they actually called them back because... That, to me, almost solidifies that this is the end because they we never seen them all together on screen like that since the first one. The first one came out almost 30 years ago. I can't believe it's been almost 30 years since the first Jurassic Park movie next year to be 30 years. That's crazy how time just flies by so fast. So to see all three of them together, reunited, doing what they're doing and fighting off these dinosaurs or trying to survive. As well as you have in the new cast, I like that they brought the old school, mixed in with the new generation, and kind of make them, made them mesh, and they worked. It wasn't like a lot of conflict or anything like that. They weren't getting into it like that, or pretty much at all, because they knew they had a mission to uh, to fill. And I'm glad that when it came to fulfilling the mission, every character had a part to play. It's not like someone was just there just to be there. They're trying to get off of this island that's in crisis right now, like literally in crisis. And one of the creepiest parts about this was these bugs. It was these locusts, these oversized giant locusts. Like we know we've heard locusts before. A lot of people call them cicadas, but they were these giant genetically enhanced locusts that were literally killing the crops. And that was pretty much another premise of the movie is that they had to find a way to stop those locusts from doing that because, you know, if you kill those crops, you kill a lot of living organisms. And if you kill the living organisms, that's going to start to bring down the human population. And then it's going to come almost like a barren wasteland. But of course, you know, when you have people who are corrupt and you have people who want to have ulterior motives and saying, you know, they thinking about the billions, then they are willing to sacrifice millions of people in order to make huge monetary gains and it's crazy that it's a lot of people out there in the world who are actually like that it's crazy how you can look at a movie like this if you take away the dinosaur aspect of it and really put in some real world stuff some of the stuff that happened in this movie is probably happening right now and probably has happened and is continuing to happen behind the scenes that you really don't uh know about they actually had two black characters in this movie like who were part of, I guess you can say, a part of the main cast. They were supporting cast, but they were part of the main cast. And I just have to throw this in there. I'm just so glad that in this movie, they did not, in my opinion, make either one of them a stereotype. Like, they weren't being goofy. Like, they had a black, it was a black woman and a black man. They weren't being goofy. They weren't being, you know, the stereotype, like how they cast a lot of black characters, especially, in, you know, and sometimes in movies like this, they're not yelling and being all all over the place like the black guy he worked close he worked in the lab uh, in the facility close to one of the main characters of the original films and what he did in the movie actually helped take down the corrupt uh facility that he was once working for the other person she came in handy because she was a pilot she literally helped them, you know, get around, but she also held her own as well. She was helping to fight off the dinosaurs and coming up with plans. So I'm glad that the two black characters that they had in this movie actually served a purpose. That that right there was a, a, re, a breath of fresh air for me. If you go see the movie, you'll see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Of course, you know, they brought back, you know, Chris Pratt. He's, you know, the main character. You know, they're off living out in the woods somewhere because they can't really be in like major society now because they're pretty much staying hidden because of i guess the effects of what occurred in fallen kingdom like i said i did not see fallen kingdom i cannot get through it i just didn't really vibe with fallen kingdom like that 
Now, one thing I will say in this movie that I didn't like was in the first half, it did move kind of slow. The first half of the movie, I will say this, if you do plan on watching it, the first half of this movie does move kind of slow. Like, there will be times like, okay, can we pick this up? When are the dinosaurs coming in? Like, a lot of the times you're waiting, it's almost like this is a Jurassic World movie. We come to see the dinosaurs do their thing. You know, I mean, it's, oh, you know, it's the humans. And that's that, that's one con to when it comes to movies involving human beings and creatures or other, you know, beings. It's a lot of times they will focus too much on the human being storyline and literally shy away from the dinosaurs. But the thing is, it's called Jurassic World. When you hear that word Jurassic, you're going to immediately think of dinosaurs. Yes, we know that the humans are there, but the humans in some cases should be like almost supporting characters to the main characters, which should be the dinosaurs. And I felt like they heavily put like honed in onto that. It was even points in this movie when they were doing some stuff. I'm thinking like, am I watching a Jurassic World movie or am I watching a Mission Impossible movie or a James Bond 007 movie? Because they had some extra action stuff going in here that i've never seen in any other jurassic world park type movie because usually in those movies the most action you're going to get is them running away from the dinosaurs or trying to find fight them off but there's some stuff in here that was going on that had you thinking it was some kind of spy agent type movie i'm at first i'm like what movie did i pay to go see but one of my favorite parts of the movie and this is a little bit of a spoiler was this particular dinosaur that latched on to whoever it was going after, whether it's a person or a thing, based off of a laser pointer in its sense. Basically, what I'm saying is these particular dinosaurs, and I forgot what the name of them were. I think they were some kind of a raptor hybrid. I'm sure if someone's watching this, they can correct me. If they had the, the there was this woman, she had the laser pointer. And if she pointed it at the person, the dinosaur would uh, uh, latch on to whoever it was pointed at. And literally, its goal is just to simply kill whoever that is, no matter what. And it does not stop until it kills the person or thing that it latched on to. And let's just put it this way. It was a whole chase scene involving that, which I just mentioned. And that was one of the best chase scenes I have seen in a Jurassic World slash park movie ever. I really enjoyed that. That was probably my favorite scene in the entire movie. And it happened probably like in the middle of the movie. That part right there was, so, it was so intense. It literally will have you on the edge of your seat. The music in that scene was so well done and well paced, and it had a lot of adrenaline. It would, it's probably one of the things that would probably have your heart pumping. It makes you wonder how long did it take them to shoot that one scene. I could tell it probably took them weeks to shoot that scene. But that scene was so fun to enjoy and watch to the point where I'm going to go online and look up the soundtrack to this movie and see if I can find the music to that scene. That the music, like I said, the music really set the tone for me. The scene was good as it is, but the music really, really ramped it up for me. If you go watch this movie and you see the scene with those dinosaurs with the laser, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And you'll be like, Torian, I see what you meant, and I can understand why you felt really hyped about that particular scene. Out of, I think, out of every scene in this movie, that one right there was my favorite scene of the entire movie. And I think it was from that point on where it started to pick up a little bit. That's so you're talking about more like the second half of the movie. Now we've gotten kind of shot away from the more boring part of it. And now we're ramping it up and, and that's the pace is kind of getting to, you know, it's picking up and it's getting to where it needs to be into where it needs to stay at. But all in all, I really did enjoy this movie. If they said that this is the last movie, I would say that they de definitely went out with a bang. It pretty much concluded with the mission of the of the Jurassic Park slash World Series of getting the dinosaurs out and in, integrated into into society uh, and having them pretty much be with other beings and other people, you know, around the, with people around the world and not just like locked in to where they are currently at. 
And that was pretty much the goal. And I think it was mission fulfilled. Uh, but with that being said, well, oh, one last thing. This move, if this movie could teach any lesson, I would say is to stop tampering with nature. Let nature take its course. Let nature do its thing. Stop trying to integrate all these things and tamper with nature and, and, and just let nature take its course. I think that's the biggest takeaway is let nature do its thing because we see what happens when you mess with what's supposed to be natural that becomes unnatural and then chaos happens. That's really the premise of pretty much the entire Jurassic Park slash World Series is people messing with nature because of curiosity and, of course, because of money. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end the review right here. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Did you like the review? Is this enough to make you go watch the movie? Would you have watched the movie regardless of my review? Also, let me know down in the comments below. If you have seen the Jurassic Park and slash Jurassic World movies, what is your favorite movie? I think it's, uh, let's see, there's Jurassic Park, Lost World 3, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, and now this. So we're talking six movies. Let me know, what is your favorite Jurassic Park movie if you've ever seen the movies? And I'm sure many of you have, because it's pretty much a cult classic at this point. And we'll go from there. And that is my take on it.